Let's forget for a minute about what Jesus said and what Judas said about Mary's action. If somebody tells you that someone spent almost a whole year's salary in doing something like what Mary did, in a way, a lot of people say, well, that's a waste of money, right? Instead of giving it to the poor. What would you say? Who would you agree with? What Mary did or really she should have given the money for the poor? You're undecided? How many of you would agree with what Mary did? Raise your hands. None of you agree with Mary. Okay, that's fine. You, you do? We have one? Or you change your mind? <laughs> okay. You know, what? remember what Mary did was in response to what Jesus did for Mary and Martha. He raised her brother, brother from the dead. Yes, Mary could have given the money to the poor, but she's showing her appreciation and her gratitude for what Jesus did for them. Imagine bringing back someone from the dead that you love, you care about. But also what Mary did represents other things, you know, in life today. We have some people like Martha. Martha is always the one doing things. Remember when Jesus visits them and with Lazarus was still alive? Martha is the one who goes and prepares the food, and Martha sits at the feet of Jesus. So Mar Martha was more the active one, the one that puts her faith, shows her faith in action. Mary is more what we call today contemplative one. She sits at the feet of Jesus to listen to him. She's the one who does this extravagant act of love to Jesus by pouring on him, you know, washing him with almost with oil and drying it with her hair. Both are good. Both are ways for us to show our gratitude to God. For example, how does that happen today? A lot of people today are very active in her helping the poor, visiting the sick, going to prisons. Other people would like to come and spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in just adoration, in just prayer. And you might think, well, you know, that's a waste of time. Why don't they go and do something? But that's not a waste of time. That's one way we show our love to God directly. Yes, we show our love to God by helping the poor and doing the works of mercy, but also by spending time with God in a way that's a very generous way in showing God our love for him. Because sometimes our most precious gift or most precious possession is our time. Do we give time to God? We're all busy, whether you're at your age or adults or retired people, everybody is busy. And we, a lot of times we hear us say, well, I don't have time to pray. We all have the same amount of time is what we choose to do with our time. And the events of this week really reminds us the, what Jesus has done for us, why we owe it to Jesus to spend time with him. Because a lot of times we forget. Just like Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead by dying on the cross, he will one day raise us back Come bring us back from the dead to die no more and to live for all eternity. Do we ever think of that gift that Jesus gave for us? Is it worth five, ten minutes every day to spend with him, to say thank you, to ask him to bring to him our problems and ask him for his guidance and help? What better gift can anyone give to us so the gift of our time, the gift of our generosity by sitting with Jesus is a way for us to appreciate what he's done for us. And maybe during this special Holy Week, special week, we can show our appreciation by taking the time maybe to come to Holy Thursday services or Good Friday, on Easter Sunday, or maybe to come every day of the week to take a few minutes every day and start preparing yourself by spending a few minutes of silence with the Lord and reflecting really on what he has done for you and what would be the generous response that you can give him. Jesus gave us his life on the cross. 
Mary signifies that by giving a year's worth of wages to Jesus in an act of adoration, in an act of gratitude. 